Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Enlightened Up podcast with your host, Craig Shoemaker. Uh, this show is about offering something different out there and giving light and levity to the world. That's what we need more. Uh, I'm like Johnny Laughter Seed. I'm just planting these seeds in you. And hopefully you will download this and put this as a regular listening to lift you up. Because we are down right now, obviously. This is the only time that I've been doing comedy for a very long time. It's the only time that everyone has something in common. We all have one thing in common. Yeah. is The entire world is going through a pandemic. Yeah. So, and it's not a good thing. There's nobody in the world going, this is great. <laughs> I think we all share that in common. It's the one thing we can all go, yes, we are all for this sucks. So that's what we're here for. We're here to offer something different. I have different guests. And today's guest is not a celebrity. Okay, this is, not, this is not somebody that I had at the top of my list to book. He happens to be the new producer of the podcast who's actually taking some of my old podcasts of Can I Help You, moving them over to here because a lot of those were uplifting, and that's what we're here to do. We're not only going to be about you know, the Pollyanna, laugh, laugh, laugh all the time. We've got to go deep and dark, but we also got to get to the light. And welcome to our podcast, Gordon Gregory. Yeah, thank you. Uh, a man with two last names, <laughs> two first names. By the way, Kenya's walking in right now. She literally, she, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to out her. She literally cannot call you by your name. She, she, I'm not kidding you. She always says Gregory. Gregory's on his way over. So I just outed her. So uh, she's taking photos of us right now. So yes, thanks you. Thank you for being our pitch in guest. We had a big celebrity guest, but his mom is sick and he had to fly to Pittsburgh. Yeah. So he'll be on in the future. So you're stepping in as our producer, and you have this beautiful studio that you set up. This is awesome. Oh well, thank you. Yeah, it's a it's a collaborative effort uh, between everyone here, and uh, it had a vision and. It, it turned out. Yeah. Well, we're, we keep working on it now. Yeah. We, we, there's some more to go in here, but I think the studio's looking great. And although we don't look so great, we're not really dressed for this. I should have. If you would have told me I had a studio, I would have dressed up in my Taylor Bird clothes. <laughs> well, we do have the Ethan Cole candles going. Let's yes. start with that. Okay. These things, you can't, it's not like we're on smell vision right now. You can't smell these things. They are the best candles. And I'm not a candle guy, by the way. I've never been a candle guy. Yeah. Yours are different, though. Tell us how you got involved in candle baking, of all things. It started about 10 years ago. Um, like everyone, go to the store, uh, buy the Yankee candle or the um, the candles off the shelf at the Bed Bath & Beyond and stuff like that. And, and you smell them, and they smell good. You get them home, you light them, and they smell like crap. And they don't smell like what they smell like in the store. And you spent 35, 40, 40 bucks for a candle, and that's just going to sit there and just look pretty. Right. And it's just I, for the look. Just for the look. And, and I hated it's that. It's not like we're Abe Lincoln. We, you know, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're exactly. writing a dissertation by candlelight. Exactly. It's mostly for the smell, right? Yeah. 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 And, and uh, I, I did some research and uh, I learned a ton of information. Um, and you researched candle making. Yeah, because uh, I'm asthmatic. I mean, I have a lung condition. I was, I was, I was a, a preemie, and uh, I have underdeveloped lungs. And uh, so I asthma, and whenever I get a cold, it's, it's extra worse for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I I'd always had this lethargic feeling whenever I had candles. And I was like, I didn't know what it was. And after doing some research, it found out that it was the... Uh, paraffin wax candles that you buy mm. and because the paraffin wax candles i mean and at the end of the day it's derived from crude oil it, it's it's the leftover stuff after they make gasoline and, and oil and stuff and it's it, fantastic i love information yeah and, I'm and an information whore <laughs> and <laughs> and it's not healthy it, you burn this stuff and it's in a room and it's in your house and you're mm. breathing stuff in and it just weighs you down it it, it, it doesn't doesn't it smells good, but it just... There's so many things out there that we're not aware of that cause allergies, exactly. cause conditions. Exactly. And we just assume that, oh, we got the candle at the store. It's got to be good. I bought it at my favorite store. I light it up. Oh, it looks good. And we have no idea that toxins are going into the air. Exactly. Same and with cleaning equipment. Exactly. I mean, not equipment, but cleaning cleaners. Yeah. Yeah. You're, it's like you're putting poison into your system. Yeah. And... The um, the candle wax that I use is soy soy based. It's soybean oil. 
Mm-hmm. And if you th- think about it, is soybean oil is vegetable oil. It's, that's what it is. It's, it's the same stuff that you 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 mm-hmm. buy in the store, except it's uh, hydrogenized like uh, Crisco is. It, it's mm-hmm. uh, made from a liquid into a solid, and uh, it's cleaner burning. It's renewable, and it's it's better for the environment. It's better for 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 us. Nice. Um, and on top of that, uh, like the Ethan Cole ones, that they're made out of coconut oil, which goes even further, where it's uh, biodegradable. It's um, uh, further than what? I don't. What do you mean? Further than coconut oil is further than it, 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 it's better than soy. Uh, it, so it, you it, don't use the soy. You use coconut. And and Ethan Cole, it's uh, coconut. You started with soy. Yeah. That was your ex- like an experiment. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. And you came up with this. I'm so pissed at you about the name, though. <laughs> what in the world is wrong with you? It, it's uh, so when I'm like talking about Ethan Cole candles and the old radio show, I had to spell it. <laughs> it, it, it was was so Ethan Cole is with a K and there's a Y and I got to tell them where the Y is. I just want to know why. <laughs> why did you put a Y in there? What is it? About the name, where'd the name come from? And I searched for a name, something that was a little bit catchy, and, and a name that um, catchy for uh, who? <laughs> it's 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 better than than Gordon's candles, and and no, not <laughs> sorry. You're gonna have to go back. I don't know how many people were like subscribed to your mailing list. I say go with Gordon's candles. I can say that easily. I can promote that. I can. Pr- I can't promote Ethan Cole candles. I can only tell people how great they are. By the way, we talked about it so much. You're going to owe me money now because <laughs> this is an ad like no other ad. Because I'm going to get to the part how much I love the candles. I just don't like the name. So where did it come from? I, I just picked it up. Oh, and, you did. And it's just um, I did some searching and it was a name that was available on Twitter, Instagram. Okay. And and e- like Ethan that. with an A was already taken. Yeah. Ethan Cole was taken, like yes. the guy's name. Yeah. Guy's name, Ethan Cole. So you don't have somebody from your background uh ethan you went to high school with or something no it totally just plucked out of the sky oh my god well you should have thrown it back (laughs) (laughs) that's why i have people on here i give a little bit of my philly yeah philadelphia that's the thing some people tell me i tell the truth too much because it does get in the way you've been following me for years so you've seen the truth telling oh yeah yeah as a matter of fact, weren't you in a front row one time? The very first time, uh, me and my yeah. friend uh, Steve uh, yeah. saw you in 2001, I believe. Well, that's a long time ago. Wow. On Ontario Improv. Okay. And uh, and it was it's at the mall, and we were just passing through, and we're like, oh, look, Improv. And it's like, oh, Craig Shoemaker. Let's go see him. Yeah. And uh, we got- Arbitrary, hadn't heard of me before? No, didn't, haven't heard of you before. Oh, good. That's and, that, You like everybody else. Yeah, and uh, hopefully I change their I change them for they still can't pronounce my fucking name. <laughs> Drives me crazy. Schumacher. Yeah. So so you go to the show and they put you in the front row. Front row. That's because you're virgins. Yeah. They put the virgins up there. Everybody who's ever seen me, they go way to the back. There, there, there are a few comments from people that are like, oh, they're in the front. Oh no! <laughs> they were like trying to warn you. Yeah, and and my friend Steve, who's very shy. Oh uh, no! It, it, he's like, what they say? I go nothing. Let's, <laughs> let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. And we sit down, and uh, you roasted him. Uh, I in, did in one of your bits about the uh, uh, being so young. Oh, he was my young fetus. Yes. So he was real young at the time. Yeah. God, now he's like forty, right? Yeah. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, it's so <laughs> sad. So somebody was ripping over being young. So he, so you, was he, a, were you a machine gun too? Because that's machine gun terror. Yeah, I was, I was machine gun. You were? Yes, I was. So what was your name? What was your machine? I'll, I'll tell you what it was. Do your machine gun. So if, you, if you're listening to me for the first time, and hopefully many are. Yeah. Many have never heard of me before because Gordon's going to take over and we're going to make sure that this thing gets spread out everywhere <laughs> because we need this, okay? So I'm a comedian, long time. I have a bit in my act, uh, probably from about 20 years ago. I was just starting to do it, where when I was a kid, we all played Army. Did you play Army when you were a kid? Oh, yeah. Everybody yeah. plays Army. Yeah. That's another common thing that everyone has, that and coronavirus. But so anyway, so we would take a stick or your fingers, you point them, and everybody has his own sound. And I say his because the girls were usually nurses. I hate to be sexist, but they, they, were, the, they were the nurses. But they didn't really play that much. No. So, but it was a guy thing, especially where I grew up. And you found some woods or backyards and everything. 
and you see somebody, you shoot them, but you, everybody had a sound like a fingerprint. It, it was never the same. No. So that was my bit, the premise of the bit. I tried it in a bar once. I'm going, this could work on stage. So I go up to people in the front row, and you should see the fear in their faces. Let me tell you, Gordon. <laughs> I've never seen anything funnier. It's my favorite <laughs> bit. To see that they look like they're going to be shot for real. Oh, yeah. You want me to do my machine? I don't remember my machine gun. And I put the microphone in their face, and we're going to do it with you right now. Okay, ready? Put your fingers up. Okay, go. <laughs> Were you the cowardly lion? Were you the cowardly lion? <laughs> if I were king of the forest, <laughs> what's he gonna hurt me for? Uh, I was just just playing. So you read the line? Yeah. Yeah, I knew. I knew. I recognized that one. Yes, so twenty years ago. <laughs> but everyone has a bad one. Yeah. yeah. So do you remember some of the other ones that you've ever seen me do? Some of the ones that stuck with you, uh, the bits. No, some of the, uh, oh, the some of the sound effects that people have made. I always name them, and by the way, they become that name. For, I'm surprised Steve doesn't to this day, twenty years later, go, "Hey, Lion, what's up?" You know, I, <laughs> I give people nicknames that stick with them. It's awesome. I love that I can do that. You know, what yeah. I mean, they, they they have that memory. So, do you remember any others or any other audience? The name of one of the guns. The I remember the one guy in the far end who was on the opposite side oh of me. Oh, my God, from 20 years ago. You remember? Okay. Yeah, I remember. It, it, he? He, he went boom. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's Barney Fife with one bullet. Boom! <laughs> boom! <laughs> I shot you all day. That's right, over here. <laughs> boom! One bullet. That's all it took to take you all down. Yes, one bullet Barney. That was probably that. Yeah. And then I've had, oh, my God, I get Sheep Boy. I don't know if you ever saw that. <laughs> you get that one. Elmer Fudd. Uh, be very, very quiet. I'm going to shoot you, Wesco. Uh. So, uh, yeah, I it's my favorite bit because it's people participating, having fun, and you're not making fun of anyone's appearance. Exactly. Their ethnic background. It's something that we can all be silly. But once in a while. That's how, that's how bad our society is. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that bit can offend people? I don't see how. I'm going to tell you how. It's crazy. This is how people search. They search for getting attention by being virtue signalers or it's about them. I had a woman come up to me in um, Valencia. She says, my son is at war. Or he's in Iraq. And I said, she goes, I'm offended. I said, what are you offended by? Because that's offensive. She doesn't know why. She just has to be, you know, people need attention so bad that they, it's like their cause is to stop comedy. Yeah. It's like, what a stupid thing. I said, is he offended by this? I said, I'll tell you the truth. I sent my CD. It's very popular with soldiers. They love it. Yeah. And I've had them in the front row doing the guns, and they're always the worst, by the way. <laughs> You know what one of the soldiers, what one guy did? I literally went backwards. I knocked my head on the wall backwards. He made me laugh so hard. You know what it was? He looks at me dead serious. Got the fingers up. He goes, peanut butter, peanut butter, peanut butter jam. Right? And I went, boom, knocked my head. And peanut butter, peanut butter, peanut butter jam. Apparently, people who are listening can write me. Apparently, they use that when they're fighting. But yes, when they're doing drills. Really? Yeah, armed forces. I don't know if it's Marines or Army or whatever it is. They use that sound. They don't use a, doo -doo -doo, you know, or, <laughs> they don't use that. They use uh, they use peanut butter, peanut butter jam. That's their gun. Oh, Isn't that wow. crazy? But so he was actually doing what they all do, but I didn't know that at the time. I talked to him afterwards. I lost it on that one. But it's, a, you know, what people can just be offended. Obviously, I can't do the bit after a shooting. I have to wait a month. Yeah. yeah. Seriously, it's crazy. I mean, if there's so many shootings, I have to keep delaying another month. But it's just a silly bit. There is nobody being killed. It's your fingers. You're making fun of yourself from when you were a kid. I also have people that are mad at me going, do your act don't, without me. Like, in the audience. Wow. Yeah. Like, that's then, how uptight people are. Then why go to a comedy show? Why go to a comedy show? Exactly. Well, their premises, I guess they're saying, you should have an act without me. 
But I'm saying let's all have fun. Exactly. That's what this show is about. Let's have fun together, you know, together as one, some one fun. So anyway, so Ethan Cole Candles, you came up with this. It's obviously not what you do for a living, but you do sell them. We go yes. to EthanCole.com. <laughs> I want to know how many are sold. What's the, can I give them a discount code? Yeah. Uh, uh, shoe? Uh, shoemaker or Love Master. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's a Love Master candle, too. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> like having, yeah, baby. <laughs> That'll burn all night, baby. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's a thick wick right there, baby. <laughs> a thick I, wick. I, I got um, an email from um, a, uh, a customer who bought it. Uh, from the radio show, no, and, and um, she's in uh, Pennsylvania, and she emailed and she, she said she loves the candle, and every time that she sees the candle and lights the candle, she thinks thinks of you, <laughs> and uh, that's a bad thought. <laughs> that's a bad thought. Uh, and stuff, yeah. So the people are out there. They're that's awesome. That. Yeah, get a love master candle. What the hell? What else are you gonna do? <laughs> what else are you gonna buy? For so, so sick of masks. I see people in masks while they're driving. Yeah. Tell me, what is that about? Here's another one. The other day I'm watching basketball, and the woman is doing the interview. She's interviewing someone who's at 90 feet away with a mask on. <laughs> What's that for? Oh, my God. It's, this, is, this is all just driving me nuts. So you uh, live in the Inland Empire, Yes, I do. Do you know how it got the name Empire? I always wondered. I always think Star Wars, ever since I've been performing out there. I have no idea. You don't? No. But you grew up there. I grew up there, yes. Do you know um, in Ontario, where you saw me perform, mm -hmm. I said, you know, I always try to see what the town's like. And I said, what's this town like? My first time there, which was then, by the way, when, when you saw me, it was uh -huh. my first week there. Oh, wow. Yeah. I said, what's this town about? They said, Meth labs and cow shit. <laughs> and, I, and I went outside and sure enough. Sure enough. <laughs> sure enough. One, one of those was correct. And then I saw some people with no teeth and I well, maybe two for two. So uh, it's, uh, you grew up out there. Is it really a lot of meth labs? Is that, is that uh, kind of like a, just a joke or is there some truth to that? It, uh, yes. Yes and no. It, there, there's part, there's certain cities within the area that are known for that. And, but now with the, uh, uh, marijuana being legal, it's it's everything's all marijuana now. Is it really? Yeah, there's much better for you. There's like six different uh, dispensaries. Oh uh, yeah, legal dispensaries. Mm. Uh, and it's just it's it's it's, it's almost like a, a Breaking Bad but legal. <laughs> wow. Okay. It's just it's Breaking Bud. Breaking Bud. There you go. Hey, hey, look at that. Yeah. You see how the comic mind works? Breaking. Bud. I'm going to use that. Yeah. I guess I just did. Well, I have to spread that a little further than the four people that listen to my podcast. <laughs> Breaking Bud, I like that. So, so you grew up out there. You love music. I do. And one of the things you do is you, I you you don't call it a manager, but you can't somewhat do a stage manage and uh, yeah. back end production. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you can also book them too. Do you ever? Handle I, the bookings, or you just turn it over. I, I turn it over. Um, you do, and I, I do the initial contacts, and, okay. and then then if there's any feelers and stuff, I'm I, trying I pass to get them you on. booked. You know, at Strawberry yeah. Farms, I told you, you got to follow through on that. Come on, that's right. I try to help people. <laughs> so anyway, the uh, it's a Journey cover band. It's a, a Journey tribute band. Were and you? Uh, it's called a tribute. I'm sorry, it's not a cover. There, band. There's a difference. There, there, tell us what it is. I love the difference. What uh, a tribute is um, a band that actually. Uh, does the music in its original form, or as close to its original form? Um, and some bands do the, uh, they dress up and they do the whole, the whole spiel of making look look like um, uh, the band uh, back in their, their heyday. That's a cover. Uh, that, that's a tribute band. Uh, a, oh, a cover band okay. is basically just a regular band that just plays covers of other bands. Right. And uh, and they don't necessarily try to replicate the the sounds from back in the day what well that doesn't make any sense so you're a cover band is doing other bands included in their set they're not just if you're dedicated to one band that's a tribute band. That, that'd be that'd be a tribute band yeah so yeah. okay yeah. but a cover band is oh they're covering of any yeah so a, a, a tribute a, a cover band is more like what you see like at a, a casino and uh, one of the lounge acts where they're Got they're it. they're just playing just, just everyone's song. Nothing original, just doing covers. Correct. Yes. 
Favorite um, favorite song from the '80s for you? Favorite song. This was a this was a hashtag the other day on Twitter, right? Favorite '80s song. I think it was yeah. And I said mine, and it just caught on fire. I love it. Yeah. I couldn't believe how it caught on fire. It was a very obscure one. But what's your favorite '80s '80s song? It had to be don't don't stop. No. Oh, yeah. oh, so you were really passionate about journey. Oh yeah, yeah. This didn't just come from hey, I got a job. Oh no, no. It's, uh, you I were had... following them, and they said, "Let's just give let's give, <laughs> let's give the stalker let's give the stalker a job already. He's here anyway, every single day in the front row." Is that how it happened? Oh no, it, it actually happened. Uh, my best friend uh, Bud and I uh, and his family were at Disneyland. And we just got off of Matterhorn, and uh, we got off, and we're like, wait, we hear Journey playing, and it was a live music being played, and we both looked at each other, and we're like, Journey's not playing here, and uh, like, oh, it's it's over, it's playing at the uh, Tomorrowland Terrace, uh, the stage that used to rise up and down um, outside of the um, the rocket ride before they they changed it over. Okay, and uh, we run over there, or they ran, I I walked. Uh, then mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't run. Um, <laughs> and we go there, and it was uh, DSB. But they were doing their cover band band at the time, which was called Sandbox. And mm-hmm. that's when they did all the cover bands of the Top 40 and stuff. And Did they sound like the different bands? Yeah, th- they did. Um, they, they, each, didn't just, they didn't just sound like Steve Perry? No. No, they so they did did a, each they... member did a, a different song and oh, stuff. Oh, that they um, were be- had a better vocal quality for duplicating uh, REO Speedwagon. Correct. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, and and of course they had been Disneyland, so they had to um, get the PG version of the songs and uh, get everything uh, approved by Disney so that they can perform. They couldn't do some of the more risque songs like "It's Getting Hot in Here." That they couldn't do that song there. Oh uh, my God! Because it's Disney. Yeah, it's Disney, and so they had to play a very strict, narrow set of uh, songs. And the, we caught the very last song, which was always "Don't Stop Believing," and we saw them. They were just like. We were just like, well, oh, these guys are great. And uh, they had just started um, uh, DSB, which stands for Don't Stop Believing. Um, and we went to their second show, which was at the Anaheim Anaheim Grove uh, venue. And from there, we just started going to all the concerts and stuff. And uh, after the sixth or seventh show that we saw them at, uh, we noticed that they weren't um, – they, they're bringing in their own, own gear. And they were <laughs> – Slapping all this stuff through right. the crowd, and and it just it was kind of I f- kind of felt embarrassed for for them because sure I mean it, here's this band that was everyone's just like in love with, and then they're fighting the same crowd to get out, mm. and so Bud and I were just like, hey, let's let's go up there and start un- helping them unload you and just, load up. Oh, okay, yeah, we just went up. We actually just went up to them and said, hey, let me grab this for you, mm-hmm. uh, and a few of them were like. And I got my own stuff. And I'm good because they didn't yeah. know us and stuff. And but then they started recognizing. I thought you were creepers. Show. Yeah, they yeah. The stalkers. Yeah. <laughs> so. And uh, so it, it led from there. And uh, back in the early 2000s, Steve and I, the uh, uh, one that went to the comedy show. Yeah. Uh, we had a clothing company back then, and uh, so I, I, I knew apparel and I knew the ins and outs of. What uh, was the name of that? Did you screw that one up too? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, that it, was the name of the apparel company. Ambush Clothing. Ambush Clothing. Yes, That's yeah. easy. It I'm was. that didn't succeed. 9-11. Oh. <gasps> oh. <laughs> that was. A, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, that, that, that killed it. We, we had POs lined up and everything was starting to go full steam and then 9-11 and then everything just shit the bed. Oh, and Yeah, nothing like a good ambush to take down the ambush. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah, so. Jeez, um, terrible. So I, I, I drafted up some. At least you uh, could spell it and find the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and wow. The, and I drafted up a uh, proposal with uh, a booklet of different designs and stuff uh, for the merchandise. Because uh, yeah. that, that was another thing that we noticed that there was no merchandise. It's like the, the bands were out doing uh, autographs money. and stuff. Yeah. And um, and the, he had um, a couple of designs. Uh, Juan, the lead singer, had a couple of designs. And. Um, and I just kind of picked up the torch and carried it, and and it left the band to focus on the band stuff, and I just took care of the the back end stuff. Um, and I, I manned the booth, I I created all the um, uh, the apparel and everything, and 
Um, and it was a collaborative um, effort between uh, Bud and Juan and myself to uh, come up with the uh, uh, logos and everything to, to go on it. And, um, and then from there, uh, me being an IT background, uh, I started doing the video stuff for the shows and um, and then doing some of the some of the audio stuff and uh, stuff, and it just kind of grew into this uh, this role. People are wondering why I sound so good. Because <laughs> Gordon came on board. I've never sounded this good before. Yeah, can, yeah. Can I? Can you like hang out with me like every day? <laughs> like when I'm I'm ordering food, I have the veal parmesan. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's even good for Love Master. Yeah. So I love the sound of this new podcast. And Gordon is our producer, Gordon Gregory. And you, so you get involved with them mm -hmm. and you, you seem to have, I mean, you, you live pretty close to Los Angeles, but you still seem to have like a, a showbiz love. You like love show business. Would I, would that be accurate? Yeah. Um, and being an IT background, I used to work, um, in IT in, in Hollywood. I used to Universal, Paramount. Oh uh, my God. Uh, wow. I, I did IT stuff and, uh, You got to meet a lot of celebrities, right? Every day. And, uh, I worked hand in hand with them on setting up their devices and making sure that they're, they're all set up while they're in you the trailers. Did you any of them? Because a lot oh, of them, they, they like the tech. No. Yes, you did. No, no, no. no. I know that one of them came on to you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That one of them <laughs> came on to you, a uh, legend. Yes, who recently passed away. Yes, and her dying words were, <laughs> "If Gordon only <laughs> only finished the job." Yeah, tell us was... about it. Okay, uh, we were doing the rap party for um, a TV show called Raising Hope. Yes, great show. Yeah, very and unusual show. It was yeah, it was very unusual. Of and um, who's the star of that? I forget her name, but she played and she was one of the original Goonies. No, I'm, I don't mean her. Martha Plimpton, right? It was Martha Plimpton was in Raising Hope. Uh, right? uh, Cloris Leachman. No, Martha Plimpton was the one you're talking about, who was in the original Goonies. Yes, yeah. Martha Plimpton. Mm -hmm. But who was the guy? Now, you know, I remember, don't know. Oh, jeez. I don't know. So, you tech people, you just look up for once. Just look up and see who somebody is. So Cloris Leachman was in it. Yes. Legendary Cloris Leachman, mm -hmm. who was in Mary Tyler Moore and Young Frankenstein and yeah. all these classics. Everybody knows Cloris Leachman, fantastic actress. We love her. And what in the world did you do? You came on to her, didn't you? No. <laughs> no. What happened was that uh, DSB was hired to do the rap party oh, for the show. okay. And uh, it was at the uh, one of the the theaters uh, over by uh, Capitol Records. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's the, uh, I forget the name of it. And we were doing, the, uh, setting up, and we were doing the show. And the show, the it was a stage, but it had a big, long catwalk. And the catwalk uh, normally has either a tape or some type of reflective material on there so that you know where the stage ends mm -hmm. and yeah. the ground. Because uh, it's a good two and a half, three foot uh, drop. And so the, the band's performing and everyone's having a good time. And I'm standing to on the side of the stage in case if the band needs anything, I can run up to the sound guy and tell him, tell him to change things. And... Uh, Cora Leachman, who was just hammered. I mean, we met her before the show, uh, before the uh, show happened, and she was just, she was gone. And she decided to lay on the stage and start doing this this dance on her back on the stage while the band's performing. And the band's just going with it, going with the flow. And she um, stands up and she starts dancing with the band. The band's playing and playing with her and everything. And then she starts walking towards the edge of the cat uh, the catwalk. And I stand on the edge and I raise my hand up for her to grab my hand so I can help her down off the stage because I didn't want her to fall. And so I put my hand up and then she holds my hand and then she leaps into me, wraps her legs around my waist <laughs> and her boobs are in my face. And she's holding on to me and she's like doing this, uh, this, cowgirl thing and she's just like doing this and she's like 80 at the time yeah and i'm just like in shock i mean because one <laughs> i didn't expect that to happen and the other one is like <laughs> i have chorus leachman boobs in my face <laughs> and <laughs> she is just she's just going just 
hamming it up, and the band is just losing it. Losing it. Losing oh. it. I mean, it's they, they didn't lose any any uh, the beat or anything, but so they, they were didn't? just no. They oh, they were just God, I would I they were know. laughing their ass off, and and she she finally uh, stands on the floor, and she puts something in my pocket, and she just pat, pats me on the face, and. Uh, she goes. That's the most excitement I've had in years. Oh my God! And did you motorboat her? <laughs> I motorboat her. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, get, you did. You motorboated Chris Cloris Leachman. Yeah. That is crazy. What a! I've got some nutty stories, my friend. <laughs> I do not have a motorboating Cloris Leachman. <laughs> I'm married Tyler Moore. I, I did no, just kidding. So, uh, and why do people call you Kool Aid? Is it because of because you crash through a wall like the Kool Aid? Yes, actually, it is. That, that's, that's that's the reason. Yeah, um, my you're nephew, a big guy. If you're not watching on video right now, big guy, three hundred and thirty pounds. No, you are not. Yeah, three thirty. Three thirty. Three thirty. Five ten. Yeah. You, actually, you do not look three thirty. To be honest oh. with you, no, not even close. That's what my doctor said too. <laughs> I would have said two fifty. Oh, I wish I was two fifty. Three thirty. Yeah, wow, yeah that's big. Yeah, yeah. And uh, my brother, nephew, and I went to Universal Studios. Maybe about... if you would run more, like your friends did when they went to go see DSB for the first time, and you said, "No, I don't run." Maybe, <laughs> don't, maybe that's run. why you're three thirty. <laughs> I don't run. And if, you, if that's your mantra, yeah, you'll get to be three thirty. So, <laughs> so Kool Aid. Is happened because you, you crashed through a wall? Yeah. My brother and nephew and I went to Universal Studios. And this was about uh, 2002 or so. And uh, we went through one of the mazes. And at the end of the maze, there was this long hallway. And in the in the long hallway, where there was indentations where there were these statues. And the statues were like a Freddy, Kru- uh, Freddy Krueger and then Chainsaw Massacre and all the... Uh, legendary horror uh, figures that are in the movies and some of them are real and some of them are statues so you walk by them and either they they try to grab you or the other ones are they just statues and so my brother and my nephew just kind of pushed me forward because i'm bigger than them and uh they they were behind me cowering and (laughs) we get by the first statue and it was fake i was like okay let's go and the other one was the chainsaw massacre (laughs) And we get past that. I was like, oh, good, it's another another one. <laughs> and he ripped on that chainsaw. It was a real chainsaw without the blade and or without the chain. Mm-hmm. And he ripped on that. It started up. <laughs> scared, scared the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> and the only time that I actually ran was in that instance. <laughs> and I'm running down this hallway. And you run down this hallway. It's about like 20, 30 feet. And it was complete darkness. And apparently there was a 90 degree turn. I didn't see that turn. And so I just went right through the wall. And it, it's a studio wall. So it, uh-huh. it's just uh, yeah. a very thin uh, mm-hmm. balsa wood or whatever. And I plowed through that wall, and just like the Kool-Aid man. And uh, on the other side was a little break area for the cast and crew. And so I bust through there. I scared them. They they turned scared, uh, screamed, and scared me, scared me even more. And I turned back, and there's no one in the hallway. My brother and nephew are on the floor crying, <laughs> laughing, and the people behind them are laughing at me. The chainsaw massacre guy is, is down there laughing at me. And I swear that this is that instant w- was the. Point where there's like, okay, now we need to have a person there with a little flashlight to let you know where to turn because now they have those people. You there. changed the rules. I think I'm the one that changed the rule. Oh, man. Well, Gordon Gregory, this is a fabulous time. Our <laughs> podcast you are now producing. Now we know you, they know who's behind the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> and if they go and see DSB, they're going to know who's behind that as well. <laughs> and they're, if they have a smelly, beautiful candle in their place, Ethan Cole. They're going to know who's behind that candle. (laughs) We found out much about you and about your products. It's really great to have you as part of the team here. I hope you're enjoying yourself. Yeah, I love it here. 20 years later (laughs) and uh, hanging out with old shoemaker here who made you do your Cowardly Lion machine gun. (laughs) 
Anyway, <laughs> folks, I hope you had a good time today. It is Enlightened Up. Go to enlightenedup.com, by the way. We are uh, having more courses. Yeah. We're going to teach more courses of Enlightened Up. Uh, I believe you took one of the courses, right? Didn't you take one? Uh, I signed up. You signed up and yeah. you, didn't, you didn't show up? No. What is wrong with you? Sorry. By the way, it's no good for this round. You've you got to re-sign up again and pay for it. Anyway, it's a, yeah, it's a great course, and it's, it's interactive, and we're shifting the world. That's what we want to do. We want to get our shift together. So listen, uh, yeah, go there. Follow me on Official Craig Shoemaker. Pass the word, obviously, on the podcast. Give us a nice review. Uh, download it uh, you know, permanently. All that stuff, okay? Just help me out. I'm not asking for much. It's not going to cost you anything. This doesn't cost anything. But I guarantee you, uh, you will have a better time with life if you find things like this. Search these things out. And gradually, one by one, we're going to bring more light to the world, and that will get rid of the darkness. All right? So I hope you had a great time today. Uh, Remember what I always say is keep this in mind and lighten the fuck up. All right? (laughs) See you next time. (laughs) 